Hi, welcome. In this video, we're going to go over program three. So program three is going to have two parts. The first part is to understand the problem and write the algorithm. You can choose to do an algorithm or a flowchart. In this video, I'm going to show you what a flowchart looks like, but I'm just going to do a numerical algorithm with you. Then the second part is to actually do the code and the implementation of the assignment. But always when you are programming, it's very important to understand what it is you're programming. So you need to step back and do the algorithm. The algorithm has no uh, language specific elements in it. So you're not gonna just uh, put anything about the functions or printf or scanf or you know C language things. It's just words, instead of putting saying printf, you just say print to the screen, get this from the user. It's the logical order in which things happen. So it's very important that you understand the problem and write the algorithm before you start to do the implementation. So let's take a look at the assignment instructions. So we're going to be continuing with the coffee theme. This program is going to uh, be an interactive online coffee shop. So the program is going to welcome the, the user, not the loser, the user, with a friendly message and instructions. You will initialize the balance in the account to $5, display the balance, display all the options. The user will make a selection based on the item number of the options. And if you have enough money, then the user, then they will purchase. If the user does not have enough money, then you're going to uh, reload. After adding the money, the user is gonna have to go back and select yes again and reselect the option. Now, this isn't the most convenient way to do it, but keep in mind that this assignment is about practicing your functions. This is not an assignment about being practical. Always you can add more things to your programs, but this is a class where we're just learning. So I want you to keep in mind that um, to follow my instructions and we will add extra features in your next couple of assignments. We'll be adding extra features to this uh, coffee shop. So you're going to use these functions, but we're not even going to talk about that now because this video is about the algorithm. So the the best way to understand and how to do the algorithm is to get a good grip on what's happening. So you can get that by reading my instructions, but you can also get it by looking at the sample output. So here's the sample output. So you can notice here, the first thing that happens is you're greeting the user and uh, providing some uh, instructions. Then you uh, set the balance to $5. So you set the account balance to $5. Then you display the balance to the user, and then you display the uh, snap, snack options. You get the options, you find out what the price is, and as you're writing your algorithm, you're thinking about, you know, how am I going to do this? So there's a, there's a process to building your application. The first is, okay, just make sure I understand what I have to do, and then once I understand what I have to do, I fill in those spaces with conditions, with functions, with printf, scanf, with math, with whatever it is, but first you gotta be sure that you have a very good understanding. So you set the price is $4.64, so you're gonna have to check. Does the user have enough money? They have $5, so they do have enough money. So in that case, they are going to make the purchase. You're gonna have to calculate the balance, display that balance again, and then find out if they wanna make another purchase, yes or no. So this uh, program is going to include a loop, which we haven't covered loops yet, but on your programming assignment implementation page, I have included a skeleton that has the loop in it. So you don't have to implement the loop, you just have to put the instructions inside uh, a before and inside of the loop body. And I will be doing another video in which I work on the implementation with you. So this is just the first video, understanding the problem and doing the algorithm. So then we're going to repeat what we just did here. So here we displayed the current balance, offered the snacks, got the choice, see if they had enough, displayed the balance, ask if they would like to go again. We're going to do exactly the same thing here. Display the balance, get the snacks, get the selection, see if they have enough. They do not have enough. So because they do not have enough money, they are then they have to reload their account. You can assume that the user will reload it with a reasonable amount. You can also assume that the use, if you're asking for an integer, the user will give you an integer. Here you're asking for an integer. Assume 
You can assume the use, you don't have to assume that the user is going to give you the correct integer, but you can assume it will be an integer. And here you can assume that when they add money onto their account, they will add a reasonable amount onto their account. But see here, I have another thing where they entered selection number nine. So you would have all of these uh, selections, but they entered selection number nine. So when they entered selection number nine, you have to let them know that that is not a valid selection. And so then they're gonna have to go back and uh, you tell them that's not a valid selection. See if they want to try again, give them the balance again, display the snack options, get the option, they have enough money, they bought it, and eventually the user will hit N and stop the program, and then you tell them their current balance at the end. So now it's time to get started to do the algorithm. So I'm going to choose to use Microsoft Word to do my algorithm. If you look at the instructions here, it says that you need to upload a PDF file. I don't really care how you create a PDF, but for me, it's easiest to use Microsoft Word to create a PDF. So let's get started. So let's take a look again at our sample output. So we're just going to number what's happening in the order in which it happens. So I always like to start my algorithm by saying number one, um, let me make this a little bigger. All right, number one, greet, not Gret, greet the user and provide instructions. So the first thing you want to do is greet the user and provide instructions. Actually, if I was doing this assignment, I would put my name and date and, and stuff on the top, but um, that's all right. We're just going to continue. All right, so I greet the user and provide instructions. Now, what do I need to do? I need to set the account balance to $5. So the algorithm has the inputs, the outputs, and the background work that's being done. But if you notice, I'm not doing anything in C code here. There's no code, this is just understanding the problem, making sure I have a good understanding of what I have to do. Then I take this and start to do the code. So you, there's no, you do not want to start implementing a program, even though I give you a skeleton to help you. You want to, if, if I were not, if I did not give you the skeleton to help you get started, you would need to go back and do your algorithm. So um, remember that that's the first step in writing programs. So I set the account bounce balance to zero, and then I display the account balance. Okay. Now also, part of the algorithm is you can do like an overview algorithm and then a refinement process. So basically what happens is there's a overview algorithm where you get a basic understanding of what's going on. Then you kind of refine your algorithm a little bit. And then you kind of go to pseudocode. Pseudocode is where you start to say, okay, to display the account balance, I'm going to use printf. To greet the user, I'm going to use uh, printf. To get information from the user, I'm going to use scanf. That is not part of the algorithm. That's part of pseudocode and pseudocode. So all I want from you is the algorithm like this in words, step by step, what's going on. So the next thing is, I display the coffee and snack options and I get the user's selection. So I display the coffee and snack items and then I get the user's select, uh, selection number. And then I uh, set the price. The item. So here, setting the price of the item involves testing, right? So as you're doing this, you're thinking, okay, well, I do have to do more than just set the price. In order to set the price, I have to say, you know, if uh, the selection equals equals one, then the price is 235. Else, if the selection equals equals two, then the price is 235. Or you could use a switch for that. I, either one is fine. When I do my demonstration, I'm going to use a switch for that. 
So I'm not in my first run of my algorithm, I'm not going to put all of those conditions. I'm just saying, what do I need to do? Greet the user, set the account balance, display the account balance, display the items, get the user selection, set the price. So now I have the price. So the user has a balance and I have a price. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to, I set the price and now I'm saying, enjoy your purchase. Well, the background to do that is I need to see if the user has enough money in the account for the purchase, right? So I need to check to see if the user has enough money in the account. If the user has enough money in the account, then I'm going to, okay, enough money. I'm gonna just make this smaller, just, you can put it a little more, but enough money in the account. Yes, I'm going to do what? And no, I'm going to do something else. So this is uh, going to be a decision here. Yes, I'm going to do something. No, I'm going to do something else. So let's assume that yes, they do have enough money. So yes, I'm going to, then I will continue to uh, number eight. So yes, they do have enough money in the account. So therefore I'm going to continue to number eight. What do I do if they have enough money in the account? I'm going to have to subtract the price from the balance and tell the user to enjoy their, their purchase, right? So if yes, they have enough money in the account, I'm going to uh, continue to number eight, subtract the price from the balance, tell the user to enjoy their purchase. If no, I'm going to have to continue or go, or just go to number nine. Now again, the flow of this is uh, gonna be different for different people depending on how you think, and that's okay. Your flow can be a little bit different. You can, uh, but as long, the point of this algorithm is not to you know do the exact same flow as me, other than as long as it's a flow that's going to help you to implement this, right? So do they have enough money in the account? Yes, we go to, we'll just uh, say number eight. I don't have to put continue. No, we go to number nine. So number nine says they do not have enough money in the account. So we're not going to subtract from the price. We're going to tell the user to reload the account. Then we're going to get the amount for reload and add the reload amount to the balance. So again, this is just all about flow. So as long as you understand, do they have enough money? Yes, they do. We go to number eight. But if we go to number eight and we tell them to enjoy their purchase, we're going to have to skip over number nine, 10, and 11, right? So if we say, okay, yep, they have enough money, subtract from the price and tell the user to, well, we can just go here. Tell the user to enjoy their purchase. So eight and nine are if they have enough money. So actually, if they do not have enough money, we're going to skip to number 10. And this is going to be also for you, as it is for me right here, a work in progress. So that's why you um, type it up in a word editor, you think about it, and then ultimately you save it as a PDF. Yes, they have enough money. We subtract it from the price. We tell them to enjoy their purchase. No, they do not have enough money. We jump to number 10, reload, and get the reload amount. So now if we go back here, all right, so then what happens? Well, you still, no matter what you do, whether they um, enjoy their purchase or they do not have enough money, you, you display their balance and ask them if they would like to make another purchase. So here we're going to display the balance 
and another purchase. Yes or no. Okay. So what do we have to do? We subtract the price from the balance and tell the user to enjoy their purchase. And then we go to number 13. So you're going to skip over here. You're going to skip over 10, the reload, get the amount for the reload and add the, uh, add that. Those are only going to happen with a no. So I'm going to actually um, highlight this. So with a no, you're going to do these things. And with a yes, you're going to do these things. So do they have enough money in their account? Yes, we do these things and then go to number 13. No, they do not have enough money in their account. We go do these three things and then we're going to meet back up at number 13. They want another purchase. If they say yes, go back up, go back to number um, three. Display the balance, display the snacks, get their selection, set the price enough. So you would go back to number three. And if they say no, so if they say yes here, then we would go back up here. Make this blue. Go back to number three. And if they say no, then what do you do? You say goodbye. So this is the beginning of understanding what's going on with this program. Greet the user, set the account balance, display the account balance, and I think what, before you say goodbye, you display the account balance again. So we display the account balance, display the items, get their selection, set the price. Do they have enough money? Yes. We subtract it, tell them, display the balance, do they like, would they like to make another purchase? Yes, we go back up to number three and start over. That's a loop. Going back like this is a loop and this right here is a condition. If you notice the conditions keep flowing down and don't go back, but loops cycle back. So uh, the next module you will be doing, you will be working on loops. So this is the algorithm, and this is all you have to do for this assignment, for the algorithm part of this assignment.